Well, here you have God creating man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And this was the purpose for work. So whoever you are, whatever your abilities, whatever your experience, God has work for you. The first thing we learn about the ministry of Jesus was that there's somebody else working. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. You see, Satan went to work in heaven before we see him in creation and led a third of the angels to turn away from God. And they were removed from heaven. And as you have this situation, Jesus comes now to undo what he did in the deception of Adam and Eve. So the one who practices sin, according to uh, the Apostle John in 1 John, uh, is of the devil. In other words, we're going to show the characteristics of who our true father, spiritual father is. And remember, we have a, a physical vocation, we have a spiritual vocation. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose. Okay, what was his work? What was he going to do? It was to destroy the <coughs> works of the devil. So was, his work is Jesus brought the gospel view of work. He came to destroy the works of the devil. His work was to do the will of his Father who sent him. His ultimate work was to do the part we could not do. To die as a sacrifice for our sin. To live again as Lord and Savior, victorious over death and the grave. To seek and to save me and you, those of us who are lost. All of mankind, all people, from the Garden of Eden to this day. God is at work redemptively and he's calling us to join him in this redemptive work. See, both the Father and Jesus, according to Jesus, are working even now. And so is the Holy Spirit. You see that in John chapter 5. The man went away. This was someone that uh, had been healed. The Jews uh, that was with Jesus and made him well. For this reason the Jews were persecuting Jesus. Because he was doing things on the Sabbath. But he answered them. My father is working until now. And I myself are working. See, when God rested on the seventh day, the seventh day and created the Sabbath, I mean, he wasn't just done. He didn't park himself on his throne. He's not been doing anything ever since. No, he's at work in this redemptive process. That's why Jesus came. And so as God is at work in your life, Father, Son, and Spirit work in your life and in my life. Because we're his children or because he's drawing us to salvation. He is still at work now today, and we are called to be a part of that. You see, God's purpose for work, God worked, and he made us in his image so that we would be a part of that work. God gave work to Adam and Eve and thereby to all creation. Sin made that work harder for everyone. Can we have an amen right now? Okay. That was kind of a weak amen for sin making things hard. Right? Y'all can do better than that. Amen? amen? Okay. Everything's hard. It was going to be harder to grow food. And, and listen, I fought my tiller all day long yesterday just to be able to get something going. And, and my hoe kept calling me. And I kept saying, no, hoe, it's too big of a space. Us, Lord, make the tiller work. You know, and, and you're... You're thinking about all of these things that you want to do. And have you noticed that you can till it all up and you can put the seeds in there and the very first thing that comes up is what? Weeds. <laughs> Amen, y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's weeds. And so sin is what Jesus has come to undo. And as we, as his children, continue to live in sin, we're missing the point of what his kingdom is accomplishing in this world. His grace, his power, his spirit is there to help us overcome, to be victorious over the power of sin and death. That we would live in true freedom, not freedom to sin, 
but freedom from sin. So Jesus speaks to us in his parables about this kind of faithfulness. You see, he shows us advancement in work as he tells his parables is an example of reward. If you go from this to this, from this state to that state, it's a matter of reward. Notice if you would in Matthew 25. Now, after a long time, the master of those slaves, and you remember this story as we go into it, came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came up and brought five more talents. Saying, Master, you entrusted five talents to me? See, I've gained five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You have worked faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Now you see, as we work alongside the Lord and we invest what? What are these things that we've been given? Well, it's interesting. That screen talk. It's interesting that when you talk about talents, it was never really intended to portray the idea of a talent to play piano or a talent to this or a talent to that. It was a money thing. But it, I like the fact that most of us get the idea that one of the resources that God has placed in our life is some natural ability. And some of you go, well, I'm not really sure what my talent is. Well, whenever you get busy working for the Lord, it'll show up. And then the other thing that you understand with uh, these talents is they're reflective also in the story of spiritual gifting. Which is a supernatural ability that has nothing to do with your brain, your thoughts, your abilities. It's something that the Spirit of God does through vessels. Even though they're cracked a little and broken a little and need to be cleaned from time to time. God uses us. And so as we serve Him, using what He has put in our life, both in our physical vocation and in our spiritual vocation, they go together and result in this production of increase. Now notice if you would, some would say, yeah, that guy, he's an overachiever. I can't stand those people. And if you look on to verse 22, also the one who received two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I've gained two more. Master said to him, exactly the same thing. Even though he didn't have five in the first place, like the other person, he used what God put in his life, or she used what God put in her life, given this group of people today. And because we were faithful, to present ourselves to serve the Lord with the things that He placed in our life, He was able to say exactly the same thing. Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Notice that both of the things say, enter into the joy. Enter into the joy of your Master. You see, when we allow God to take our physical vocational skills and our spiritual vocational abilities by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we are useful for His purposes. Not only does that result in some reward on our behalf, it brings the Lord joy just to see us function in that way. As you think about your own life, a lot of people say, well, what is the purpose for my own work? What, is, what has been God's, I guess, fulfillment for me in all of this? Fulfillment of work results in reward and approval of the Master. What, what more could be of greater joy to us than to know that in our physical lifetime, the shortest part of our existence, because eternity is eternity. Right? That we were saved by Him, that we were changed by Him, that we were washed and made His very own in the blood of the Lamb. And as He's done this work, now we have both a physical and a spiritual vocation to serve Him 
and that as a result of our life, we'll be able to stand before Him someday. Not just the people in the family, but you and me, and hear those words. Well done. Good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. See, all work is not physical labor. Guys have a problem with that. Some of you ladies do too. You don't see it until all of a sudden we can't do what we used to do. Oh my goodness, I can't do this, I can't pick that up, I can't haul this, I can't I can't bend over anymore. Would you tie my shoes for me? I, I know. <laughs> and and so it's for us it's all about our physical capabilities. And, and guys, we make the mistake sometimes of uh, turning our spiritual vocation over to uh, our wives. Say, no, you do the spiritual part, I'll do the physical part. And the problem is, is that we wind up with empty, hollow lives because the thing that brought our wives so very close to the Lord was the time invested in spiritual growth and, and relationship, and we're going to let them do that. Ultimately, we're going to get to the end of our life and all we're going to be able to say is, well, I'm pretty worthless because I can't do anything anymore. It's all about relating to Him. Now, God wants to restore His image in us. He wants to not only turn back the picture from before the fall, but He wants us to look like, be like, Jesus, his son. Now, we'll never be God, but we will be his children, and we will be like Christ. And this is the promise of God's word. So why would we focus on just our physical vocation? See, the gospel is that Jesus has done all the work. I'm not worthy to save myself. I'm a sinner. How can I save myself from sin? And there's not any good works that I could do. If I piled up a pile of good works here, every time I turned around and looked, there'd be a bigger pile over here of the things that I've done that were wrong. Somebody has to deal with this astronomical mountain of sin. And I can't because I'm a sinner. And so because of Jesus, He, as I put my faith and trust in Him and His ability to save and to change he then can do all of the issues of dealing with sin. And as I present myself daily as a living sacrifice, I rejoice in the fact that not only can He use me in my spiritual vocation, but that also there is now, therefore, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, is there a point in time when you're done? When you finally achieve the goal where you try to kind of just get <coughs> proved? When you look in 2 Thessalonians 3, you could be the Apostle Paul. <laughs> you could be the Apostle Paul who's been traveling throughout the Mediterranean area. You could be the Apostle Paul who's sacrificed so much. He's left his whole history behind. He has surrendered himself to follow Jesus. He, he has this, this thorn in the flesh. We think possibly some kind of a, an eye disease or something of that sort. He's been shipwrecked. He has been stoned and left for dead. And you think, cut him a break. And yet, what do you find him saying here? Because we did not act in an undisciplined manner among you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with labor and hardship, we kept working night and day so that we would not be a burden to any of you. And so you see this commitment to being the kind of people that show we look like God. God works. <laughs> And we work. Now we can work in opposition to God. And that's going to cause problems. In fact, you find a case where Paul finds apparently somebody who is not willing to work. 
And so for even when we were with you, we used to give you this order. If anyone is not willing to work, he is not to eat either. For we hear that some among you are leading an undisciplined life, doing no work at all, but acting like busybodies. How such person, uh, now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to work in, the quiet, in a quiet fashion and eat their own bread. So I think whatever you're going to see here, you want to make sure you don't see the wrong things. Look at that passage. It says, if anyone is not willing. Okay, so don't read if anyone is not able. Because you would say, well, I'm not able to work and so I feel bad. No, that's not what the passage says. If anyone is not willing. And there's a difference between not being able to work and not being willing to work. And see, the provision then comes for those who are willing to have their physical vocation to do whatever they can do and their spiritual vocation as well. Whatever you do, this is a, a passage that was written to slaves. Slaves in all things, obey those who are your masters on earth. Now, some of y'all are working 712s, so just you qualify, okay? <laughs> Slaves. At least the way it looks, y'all are not laughing. There you like, yeah, I know the feeling. In all things, obey those who are your masters on earth, not with external service as those who merely please men, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, do your work heartily. As for the Lord, rather than for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. With your physical vocation, with your spiritual vocation, the idea is to keep the focus on the fact that I'm serving the Lord. 